Hello students, Mr. Courtney here. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the solubility and the rate of the solution. The tips here will be to use a solubility curve. I'm going to determine how much of a solute can be dissolved in a solution at a given temperature or what temperature would be required to dissolve a given amount of solute in water. Uh, we're going to identify the factors that affect the solubility of a solid and the rate of the solution of a solid. So when we talked about solubility, solubility is an intensive physical property. Okay, it describes how well a substance will dissolve in any given solvent. And what we're talking about here, the solvent is water. Remember, when substances dissolve, they're going to break apart into the smallest units. And we know ionic compounds break apart into the ions. Now, if a substance does not dissolve in water, we're going to describe it as being insoluble. So like... Lead iodide. So it's a solubility curve substance which does not dissolve here. in water. A solubility so curve shows a, the amount of solid. solid that can be dissolved in a so if substance is soluble in water, water. It will dissolve and it will break apart it into the smallest particles. And we see if it's if insoluble, it will remain as an increase solid. of solubility. Because as we increase the temperature here, which is on our x-axis, as temperature increases, look, the solubility of the substances will increase. That is. How much of the solute can we dissolve in 100 milliliters of water? Or what, how, many, how many grams of the substance can be dissolved in 100 milliliters of water at a particular temperature? So at 20, look at the solubility of, let's say, potassium nitrate. We go to 40 degrees Celsius. We see that the solubility has increased. And if we got across to 60, 65, we see that the solubility is still increasing. So as temperature increases, the solubility increases so they are directly proportional in most cases as we see here so the density of water is one gram approximately one gram per, per milliliter so that means a hundred grams of water would be the same as a hundred milliliters of water so it's important that we understand that so when we're given situations where we're told or asked how, what amount of the solute can be dissolved in a hundred milliliters of water we have to Remember that since the density of water is 1.00, approximately 1 gram per milliliter, that 100 grams is the same as 100 milliliter. So we could be given volume or we could be given mass of water. Okay, if we have this question, approximately how many grams of potassium bromide can be dissolved in 100 grams of water at 95 degrees Celsius? So... We have to look at what we're given and what we want. And this is this is math. We're doing math here. We're reading a graph on math. So we're not interested in 100 grams of water because this is a constant. This is telling us how many grams of water we're dissolving the substance in. What we're interested in is our 95 degrees Celsius. And since we're given temperature, that means we start on our temperature axis. So we're going to find 95 degrees Celsius, so that's 85, 19, 95 degrees Celsius. And since we want potassium bromide, now we have to be very careful here. Notice how many different curves we have, different curves on this graph. We're interested in potassium bromide, so we're going to use this one. So this is the curve we're going to be using. And it's like you're, you're, it, you're using it in, in math, sorry. You're interpolating, you're getting the values in between what you already know. So we start at 95. When the line crosses for, or it meets potassium bromide, we draw a straight line go across, and that gives us approximately 100 grams of potassium bromide. So that means 100, approximately 100 grams of potassium bromide can be dissolved in 100 grams of water at 95 degrees Celsius. So now we're given potassium nitrate and we want to know how many grams of it we can dissolve in 100 grams of water at 70 degrees Celsius. So again, remember, we're not concerned with the 100 grams of water because that is our constant here. What we're con concerned about is our 70 degrees Celsius. So we find 70 degrees Celsius on our x-axis and I'll show you. So remember, we go in 65, 70. And since we want potassium nitrate, we'll go up and we'll do the simulation in a while. So we'll go up, find it, go up until we meet it, then go to the left to our y-axis, which gives us solubility. And we get approximately 137 grams of potassium nitrate. So 137 grams of potassium. 
potassium nitrate will dissolve in 100 grams of water at 70 degrees Celsius. So in this question, we're asked at approximately what temperature can you dissolve 100, 160 grams of sodium chloride? So now we're given temperature to find grams. We know we're dissolving it in 100 grams of water. So we, that means we're going to start on our y-axis this time. We're going to start on our solubility because we have, we know how much we want to dissolve. So we need to find that particular temperature. We also need to identify the curve that we're going to use. We want sodium chloride. So this is our sodium chloride curve. So we start on our y on our solubility or y-axis at 160, go across until we meet our curve and go down until we get to our desired temperature on the x-axis. That will give us our desired temperature, sorry. And that temperature we get is approximately 63 degrees Celsius. All right, so let's look at the temperature and the solubility of a solid. And we already established that. As temperature increases, the solubility of a solid increases. As temperature decreases, the solubility of the solid decreases. So they're in they're sorry, they're directly proportional. If I increase temperature, I'm gonna increase solubility. Think about it. You're trying to dissolve sugar in a glass of iced tea. It's very it's cold already. How much of the sugar do you actually dissolve? But what if you take that iced tea now and you heat it up? How much of the sugar will be dissolved now? Pressure. Pressure has no effect on the solubility of a solid. So whether it's at high, temp high pressure, low pressure, it will not affect the solubility of the solid. The rate of dissolving. Now what is rate of dissolving? Rate of dissolving is how fast the solute will dissolve. This has nothing to do with solubility. It just depend, determines how fast it will dissolve. What factors will affect how fast a solute dissolves? Temperature and the rate of dissolving are directly related. So that means as we increase temperature, the amount of solute, the how, sorry, how fast the solute dissolves is going to increase. So they're directly related. When I increase temperature, so if I have 100 grams of water at different temperatures, how fast will that amount of solute dissolve? The higher the temperature, the faster the solute will dissolve. Lower the temperature, the slower the solute will dissolve. So that's why we say they're directly related. Stirring or agitation as we call it, how does that affect it? If you stir a solution or you agitate it, you shake it, then the solute, the solid solids will dissolve at a faster rate. So stirring, agitation increases the rate of dissolving or the rate of the solution causes the solute to dissolve faster. All right, and again, be careful here. It increases the rate of dissolving, not the solubility. It increases how fast it dissolves, not the amount it can dissolve. Let's look at the size of the particle and the rate of dissolving a solid. So we can have big chunks of the solid or small chunks of small pieces of the solid. Which one will dissolve faster? If we decrease the size of the crystals, we make the size smaller, then the rate of dissolving will be faster. So they're directly related. If you take a lump of sugar or sugar cubes and put it in water at a certain temperature and you take the same amount of sugar, but in smaller pieces now and put it in same amount of water at the same temperature, which one dissolves faster? The one that has the smaller particles. Larger crystals will dissolve slower and smaller crystal, crystals will dissolve faster. Now, we use this thing called a mortar and a pestle in the lab to ground up or to make substances smaller. And some of you, you may, you may see this in a kitchen or so. They use it to grind spices and, and so into smaller pieces or different substances. Make the crystals or the pieces of them smaller as they go, as they're used. Why do the smaller crystals dissolve faster? Because they have a larger surface area. More of the crystals, more parts, or more, 
larger area on the crystals, different parts. More parts are available to be attacked. So there are more parts available, more parts exposed, so they're going to dissolve much faster. Pressure. Pressure also has no effect on the rate of dissolving of a solid. So it does not, pressure does not affect the amount, the solubility, and it does not affect the rate of dissolving or the rate of dissolution of a solid. Okay, so let's summarize here. What would be the effect on the sol solubility of the solid if we were to increase air pressure? No effect because we just stated pres pressure has no effect on the solubility. If we increase the temperature, we're going to make the substance more soluble. Decreasing air pressure, no effect. Decreasing temperature is going to make it less soluble. That's the important things we need to take from here. We look at the rate of dissolving. If we increase temperature, the rate is going to increase. The substance is going to dissolve faster. If we crush the solid, crushing the solid means to make it into smaller pieces. So it's also going to dissolve faster. Air pressure, no effect. Stirring the solution is going to cause it to dissolve faster. Remember, agitation. If we use larger crystals, it's going to dissolve slow because we have larger pieces of the, sol the solid. They dissolve slower. We decrease temperature, they're going to dissolve slower. If we decrease air pressure, it will have no effect. Okay. So this takes us to the end of this one. Until the next time, I'm out. Blessings.